This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome back to Living for God's Word, where the plan is to read the Bible in 52 weeks using Dr. Kimberly D. Moore's book, The Bible in 52 Weeks, a year-long Bible study for women. If this is your first time coming across this video, I welcome you to um, visit my channel where there is an introductory video as, where, as well as previous week's videos. We are in week 31 of this 52-week journey, and all of the previous week's reviews are on the channel, and um, as well as the dis uh, resources um, listed in the description. So let us go to the throne of grace before we dive into due season on page 106 of the book. Say, Heavenly Father, we come before you thanking you, Lord God, for your son, Jesus, for um, your word and for this book of, of Ecclesiastes and Psalm that we've read this past week, Lord God, let us glean from these your word what you would have us to glean in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And so I'm going to jump ahead to page 109 where Dr. Moore um, focuses this past week on Ecclesiastes. Um, as I mentioned, we, we did read Ecclesiastes. We started Ecclesiastes 1 and then we jumped back into Psalms and we were in Psalms 104 to 106. But Dr. Moore does focus on Ecclesiastes 1 through 4. And on page 109, um, the verse of the week was Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 6. And I will read that in a moment. Um, I will, I'm jumping ahead to that. Um, but in previous weeks, I did say that I would um, read um, background on each um, book that when we first begin a book, that I would read um, information on that um, on the book. And so this um, is a women's study Bible that I use, New King James Version, whatever version that you have. Um, God is just pleased with um, you picking up his word and reading it. Dr. Moore uses New King James Version as well as a New Living Translation in her book, but she also uses in her commentary other um, versions as you've seen. Um, okay, so Ecclesiastes. Um, the title, um, the Hebrew title uh, means, in parentheses here, it says, Go, Goheleth, Goheleth, the preacher, lit, literary, um, one who calls together an assembly, is from the root quahal, meaning the assembly or congregation, and that's referencing Ecclesiastes 12.8. Um, Koheleth appears nowhere else in the scripture. The English title of the book is a transliteration of the Greek Ecclesiastes, E-K-K-L-E-S-I-A-S-T-E-S. -E -E literally, li literally, I, I meant to look that up, but L-I-T period, I think it means literary, liter something like that, but forgive me, I'm not a, bi a Bible scholar as I say in all my videos, but um, so seek wise counsel. I am a woman after God's own heart, slaying this giant of reading the Bible in 52 weeks, along with you praying for me while I pray for you in the name of Jesus. Um, so the one who calls an assembly, which is the book's title in the Septuagint, which is a Greek translation of the Old Testament. Amen. The author. Tradition is strong in ascribing the authorship of Ecclesiastes to King Solomon. The book itself supports this view by asserting that the words are those of the son of David, king of in Jerusalem, Ecclesiastes 1, 1. The author identified himself as the preacher, as king reigning over Israel in Jerusalem, Ecclesiastes 1, verse 1, and also verse 12. As a wealthy individual, Ecclesiastes 2, verse 7 and 8 and or verse 7 and also ecclesiastes 8 right and as a love of proverbs ecclesiastes 12 verse 9 the characteristics lend further weight to solomon as authorship um okay so i'm going to skip down to date those who reject solomonic authorship date the book as late as the fourth or third century bc According to the traditional view of Solomonic authorship, however, the book of Ecclesiastes was written during the 10th century BC when Solomon reigned. This tradition was unquestioned until the 16th century and has the stronger support. Okay, so the background setting. As wisdom literature, Ecclesiastes may have been used in an educational setting. Purpose. Ecclesiastes records Quoheleth, Quoheleth, observations as he searched for meaning in life. Koheleth concluded the human with that that human wisdom apart from God is vanity or emptiness. Yet the preacher ended on a positive note. 
as he observed that the ultimate meaning of life is found only in a right relationship with God. Amen. The audience of Ohilith, Ohilith, Ohilith may have been his pupils. My son was the typical way a preacher addressed his students. See Ecclesiastes 12.12. 12. Um, okay, so literary characteristics. The book of Ecclesiastes is classified as wisdom literature. Wisdom teaches, teachers drew conclusions about life from their observations. I love that. The wisdom teacher, Koheleth, was pessim pessimistic or skeptical in his outlook as he drew conclusions about the meaning of life from human wisdom. Koheleth employed the literary forms of the proverb, the parable, and repeated refrains. All is vanity under the sun. Okay, themes. The theme of Ecclesiastes is the search for life's meaning. In, is life worth living or is it just a meaningless existence that ends in futility? Quoheleth set out to investigate thoroughly what makes life worth living. He discovered that the meaning of life does not lie in labor, luxury, lust, leisure, learning, or liquor. Ultimately, the author realized that a life worth living can be found only in a relationship with the Lord, Ecclesiastes 12, 13, and 14, and that a life may, that a life not focused on the Lord is futile and empty. Ecclesiastes reflects the skeptical, pessimistic assessment of human life projected by Quoheleth, yet ends with a declaration of the ultimate purpose of life, which is to obey and glorify God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. All right, so to Dr. Moore's commentary on page 109, the verse of the week was Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 6, for everything there is a season, a time for every activity under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to harvest, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to cry and a time to laugh. A time to grieve and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to turn away. A time to search and a time to quit searching. A time to keep and a time to throw away. Amen. So, to everything turn, turn, turn. There is a season turn, turn. I remember that song growing up. So, all right. So, I'm going to head back to 107, the commentary. The title again of week 31 is Due Season. All right, so I'm just going to read Dr. Moore's commentary because as always, it's awesome. So she says, The book of, of Ecclesiastes consists of poetic writings by King Solomon. He starts off by saying that every activity under the sun has an appointed time. Ecclesiastes 3, 2, 3, 2 through 8, which I will read. Ecclesiastes 3, 2 through 8. A time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. This is New King James Version. A time to gain and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear down, an attempt to sow, a time to keep silence, an attempt to speak, a time to love, an attempt to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. So that was um, two through eight. Amen. And I've read three, one through six. Excuse me. Ecclesiastes three. Right. I've read one through six um, in the commentary, and then I read a New King James Version through eight. I read one through eight. All right, so, um, so she points out that each verse notes a characteristic activity of life with, which matches the opposite. Just as surely as something good happens, something bad can, can and will happen as well. Just as surely as day comes, Night is sure to arrive. Just as surely as summer comes, stick around and you'll see winter soon. That's the way God ordained it. By the same token, nobody wants to suffer or be in need, but it, it unfortunately will happen. Nonetheless, the good news is that it won't last. 
I'm so glad. Da -da 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 -da. Trouble don't last always. Amen. So, as First Peter one six says, "Is this you great in this? You greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. But guess what? It's only for a season." And I just thought of um, James says, "Count it all joy for various trials." For a due season, uh, I'm not going. I'm not quoting it directly, but it's. I think it's James, one. But um. But yes. Yeah, so it, okay. So I'm gonna stick with this commentary. It's only for a season, right? So while we're waiting on our season of grace and favor, there's another song. This is my season for grace, for favor. This is my season to reap what I have sown. Amen. Ah, uh, yes, we have to keep in mind that whatever happens is in God's plan. It's, it's not our time and it's God's timing. God has allowed it for a purpose. We have to learn how to accept God's time timetable. And we've got to trust that he knows exactly what he's doing. Ecclesiastes 3.9 says, so she already, uh, Dr. Moore already put it here. So I have New King James Version. I'm not sure what version this is, but I'll read it. 3.9. 9311 says, what do people really get for all their hard work? I have seen the burden God has placed on us all. Yet God has made everything beautiful for its own time. He has planted eternity in the human heart. But even so, people cannot see the whole scope of God's work from beginning to end. Hallelujah. Truth is, Dr. Moore says, we'll never be able to understand the mind of God. He is infinite in his wisdom, and our minds can never, ever possibly understand his ways. His ways are above our ways. His thoughts are above our thoughts. Hallelujah. We have no idea what God will do or how he's going to do it. We just have to trust his timing and his plan. If you can, just make it through one season. You'll eventually embrace the next. If you can get through the season of lack, God will shift you into a season of overflow. If you can make it through the season of sickness, God will shift you into a season of good health. Amen. If you can get through the season of silence, God will shift you into a season of revelation. Hallelujah. But you've got to trust God through this season. Don't be discouraged and by all means do not despair. Recall what Paul wrote in Galatians 6, 9. Let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. That's New King James Version. No matter the season you're in right now, get through it so that you can get to your due season. Oh, that's such good news. That's hope. That's hope. That's hope. So remember the, uh, Hebrews 11 1 says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Meditate on that. Amen. Points to ponder this week on page 108. Understanding that there are various seasons of life. What is the most difficult to accept about the hard seasons? We're being honest with one another. These are my points to ponder. You do your individual points to ponder. But I said that sometimes you, I think about when will it end? When will it end? But, you know, just being encouraged that, you know, remember the song, this is my season for grace, for favor, whatever the season is, because God's working it out, right? So whenever, whenever, as Ecclesiastes said, there's a time for this, there's a time for that. So God is the ultimate one. He decides when it is. So amen. So yeah, so we do think, when will it end? When When is the season? We, we think, when is it, God? I know you're going to do it. I trust that you're going to do it, when you're going to do it. But as Dr. Moore reminds us, it is God's timing. So that's difficult. Um, how have you handled your hard seasons in the past? Um, talking to other people but just remember if you don't have a prayer partner i don't think i've said this in, in previous videos but if you don't have a prayer partner um i it's really good to have a prayer partner some someone who um you know you can trust and lean on and, and help you um get through whatever season it is reminding you uh, accountability to say you know what remember what the lord said um but also um to encourage you it but not um, discourage you into not expressing how you feel because you still you know we're still human we still have feelings and we think of, we still want to express some things but just trying to keep it positive that sometimes not sometimes that is a good thing to have someone to to keep you on that track uh number three going forward what will you do differently when your seasons begin to change 
Well, first of all, when you you know when you see that they're changing, praise God through it. Praise God through it. Praise Him through it. Hallelujah. Amen. This was such a wonderful, wonderful um, reading. Um, and so, starting tomorrow, we're going to be in week thirty-two, and it's going and it's titled "Oh, What Love." And we're going to be in the Song of Songs. Amen. Um, day one, one through four. Day two, five through eight. And then we're going to go back into the Psalms on day three. And we're going to pick up at 107 through 110. Day four is 111 through 116. Day five is 117 through 119. And day six is 120. Psalms 120 through 128. And day seven, seven excuse me, is the day to catch up on any readings that you may have missed. And the day that I said that I would come back and share with you. My points to ponder as you continue um, on this individual journey, um, jotting down and meditating on your points to ponder in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much.